So our topic today is matter, atoms, and the periodic table. Everything you see pictured here. So there's water, there's a tree or grasses, plants, there are animals, and then latex balloons with some kind of either helium gas in them or air. Everything pictured here is made up of matter. And the definition of matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. All matter is made up of things called elements. And all of these elements are represented or organized in something called the periodic table. And we're going to have a look at that in just a little bit. Another term I want us to be familiar with is an atom. Okay, if you, if you looked at any of the elements and you said, I want to find the very smallest piece of that element I can, I can get down to, and it still be that element, it still has the characteristics that that element has, that would be an atom. So every element is made up of atoms. Now, an atom of oxygen is not the same as an atom of helium or of carbon, but they are all atoms. Now, each atom has three different particles or subatomic particles, if you want to impress your friends and use a big word, okay? Protons are positively charged particles inside of an atom. Electrons are negatively charged particles. And neutrons are then, therefore, neutral. They don't carry a charge. Here's the periodic table of elements. And I want to point out first that there are 92 of these all represented by one of the boxes that are naturally occurring and the rest of these are laboratory generated. And we have hydrogen, um, the very first element here that we, we have represented down here in a little bit larger size so we can talk about what's inside each of the boxes in the periodic table. So first of all, it has the name of the element hydrogen. And then each element has a symbol whether it's, a, it's either one capital letter or a capital letter and a lower case. In this case, H for hydrogen, pretty straightforward. And then there are two important numbers represented for each element. This one is the atomic number. And what I want you to see about the atomic number is they're going to go in order across the rows and down through the periodic table. So hydrogen is number one. Go over helium is number two here. And then we move down to the next row, three, four, five, and it just continues for the entire periodic table. So the atomic number is how they're ordered. The atomic mass is the number that is below the atomic number, and it will at least be as big as the atomic number or larger. So we're going to talk a little bit about what do each of these numbers represent in terms of the atoms. But before we leave the periodic chart, I also want to point out to you four very important elements in biology. Because if you looked at living things, the percentage of their composition, in other words, what elements are they mostly made of, there are four specific ones. Okay, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. So let's identify those on the periodic table. So we've already pointed out hydrogen is here, carbon is here, nitrogen, and oxygen. So those are the four most common elements for living things. Now I want to make sure before we move to the next slide that I point out to you we're going to focus for just a minute on carbon. We're going we're gonna to use the carbon as an example to, to take forward our definition of atoms and the subatomic particles. So the atomic number of carbon is 6. I'm just getting that from the periodic table. And the atomic mass of carbon is 12.11. So I'm going to put carbon up here. We're going to say 6 is the atomic number and 12.11 is the atomic mass. Now what do I need to know about this information? Well, the atomic number, besides ordering the elements in the periodic table, is going to tell you how many protons there are in that atom. Whoops, number of protons. Okay, so in this case, an atom of carbon has six protons. An atom of carbon will never have more or less than six. 
And if you look back at the periodic table, that's because if something has seven protons, then it's an, it's an atom of nitrogen. If it has five protons, it's an atom of boron. Carbon, every atom of carbon will always have six protons. Now, what does the mass number or the atomic mass tell us? Okay, let me just make sure I identify this. So this is the atomic number. Those are the ones in order. And down here is the atomic mass. Okay. Sometimes it will be called the mass number. So the key word there is mass. And mass is not the same thing as weight because weight is influenced by gravity, but you can think of it, it's similar in that mass is telling you something about the size. Okay. So what does the mass tell us? Well, it tells us how many protons there are, but it also takes into account how many neutrons there are. So the mass takes into account two of the particles. Now notice, it, it doesn't take into account the electrons. And that's because the size of the electrons are so much smaller than the protons and neutrons. It would be as if you're weighing an elephant, okay, and then a fly lands on his back. It's negligible. It wouldn't even count. So we're not worried about the mass of the electrons in our mass of an, of an atom. Okay, we can easily figure out how many neutrons there are because we know how many protons, six, we got that from the atomic number, and the mass is just uh, 12 minus the six, which would give us six neutrons. But I want to explain something to you before we do that for sure, and that is the mass is not an even number. It's, a, it's most, almost all of them are gonna have a decimal point. And that is because of something called isotopes. And what is an isotope? Well, an isotope just means that atoms have different numbers of neutrons. Remember that all carbon atoms have to have six protons. That can't change. But there can be a different number of neutrons. So carbon actually exists as carbon 12, meaning that it has a mass of 12, carbon 13, carbon 14. So in this example, in this isotope of carbon, the mass is 12 minus the six protons tells us that that particular atom of carbon has six neutrons. Carbon 14, on the other hand, has a mass of 14, still has six protons, it has to to be carbon, so this atom of carbon has eight neutrons. So this number is an average. If, if you took every carbon atom and you averaged the, their masses, it would give you 12.11. So the majority of them are gonna be in this form. That doesn't mean it's normal. These are all equal isotopes. It just means the average of all the masses gives you 12.11. Okay, now let's take a closer look at how these particles come together physically to form an atom. We're going to use carbon-12 as our example, in other words, an, an isotope of carbon that has a mass of 12. So we know that carbon always has six protons. That's what defines an atom of carbon. And protons are positively charged, so there are six positive protons in an atom of carbon. And for, for an atom that is not charged, in other words, it's electrically neutral, there will be an equal number of electrons. So carbon has six electrons, or, and so electrons are negatively charged, so six negative charges. <clears throat> carbon also, carbon 12, remember the, the mass is 12, minus the number of protons is six, so it also has six neutrons. Okay, and these are neutral, they do not have a charge. Now, an atom has a central nucleus, so this is not the same thing as a nucleus of a cell. Later when we talk about the nucleus of a cell, we're talking about the area where the DNA is, may, is housed in the cell. 
but the nucleus of an atom just means the center or the core of the atom. So let's say this represents the, represents the nucleus of the atom. So what we have is we have six neutrons that are going to be present inside the nucleus of the atom. We also have our protons that are going to be, excuse me, be represented in the nucleus. So we'll draw six of those. Now the electrons, on the other hand, are not found in the core of the atom or in the nucleus. They're actually in constant motion. Remember that these we said were extremely small and they are in constant motion around the atom. So the electrons, we, we say that they occur in orbitals and these are just the likelihood of where they may exist at any given time because they're in constant motion. So I'm going to draw this first energy shell or orbital and we're going to say that we're going to put two of these electrons okay in the first shell it only holds two electrons it's full with two electrons now the next shell outside of that will hold eight up to eight electrons so we have six total which means we have four electrons that we need to put away in this shell And I've drawn these with these rings around them to mean that these electrons are in constant motion. So we're just predicting where they might be at any given time. And remember that they have a negative charge, whereas the protons have a positive charge. And it's the opposite charge's attraction that keeps the electrons circling the nucleus of the atom.